Shivana Gebandhana Yogeshwara Shivana Gebandhana Bhuteshwara Shivana Gebandhana Kaleshwara Shivana Gebandhana Jagadishwara Bandhana Madheva Bahurupiya Kandano Kandano Ejivia Kandano Kandano Ejivia Yenjiva Vundano Shivarupiya Tandhano Tandhano Gnana Amrita Tandhano Tandhano Gnana Amrita Tandhano Tandhano Nana Amrita
this guy. <clears throat> well, we've been 36 days on the road. <clears throat> Last 40, 45 years, I've continuously been in trouble, but still, uh, this has been a journey like no other in many ways. <laughs> because uh, a variety of things. One important thing is I didn't have to manage all of you <laughs> Because whenever we make these trips, whether… Hmm? Please, Roger. Whenever we make these trips, rallies and Himalayan trips and Tibet and whatever we do, uh, always on schedule and managing people endlessly. Well, this was scheduled for twenty-one days, but it went to thirty-six days. If you were there, you would freak. No, no, don't shake your head because uh, <laughs> this is the reality of today's existence that people go through seven days of uh, inner engineering online, come with great enthusiasm, they travel long distances and come for the initiation. Uh, the session closes at six o'clock but they've got a flight at six twenty. So the presence time, you know, they want to fly at that time. <laughs> and uh, second initiation is there, no, no, you can't leave. No, no, I have to go, I have to go. <laughs> Somebody running away here, there. So many times we change the timing of the program to adjust to these things. But unfortunately, this is how people are made because uh, this is what needs to change. It looks like this pandemic has brought some wisdom. Now people are able to <laughs> stay on something. Well, <laughs> not being on a two-wheeler, or a motorcycle for this long, in many, many years, nearly thirty years plus, I was saying. In between, we have ridden a little bit here and there, one day, two days, three days, but not like this. Just a few hundred miles short of ten thousand miles. Because uh, some of the Native American reservations were not open, we called off the Monument Valley, Tucson, otherwise it would be well over eleven thousand, I think. So it's not about the mass, it is about a whole team of people, please. 
God. Yeah. Leave it where it is, no need to change. Hmm. A whole team of people, to be specific, sixteen, seventeen people, operating like one organism, the last thirty-six days, without a hitch, always keeping up to whatever we had to keep up to, the logistic teams which were functioning from here, the technology teams which ensured daily at least three to four interviews <laughs> and shoots and things like that, and our camera teams doing circus to get the right shots. <laughs> Every one of them, without being told what needs to be done, doing a fantastic job. Well, those of you who get frustrated with Isha, because uh, it doesn't function like a corporate system, everything seems to be a big confusion, but never once has any event gone, you know, has failed. Always, every event happens. Well, uh, that is why I described Isha as an organization as a roller coaster. A lot of people thought, oh, it's a dangerous organization. But when did you hear? that a roller coaster flew off its rails, flew off its rails and crashed and killed hundred people. When did you ever hear that? Such a thing never happened, it just gives you a feeling. <laughs> you know, we are… Uh, our work is to create an experience. <laughs> Either with joy, ecstasy or sheer frustration, you will turn spiritual. <laughs> because Yogarotova, Bogarotova, we've been singing, all right? One way or the other, it doesn't matter, you must turn inward, that's all. <laughs> so, uh, it's only when you put them to hard situations where uh, multiple you know, multiple factors which are unforeseen and unpredictable factors, then you see, suddenly they are at home, they function wonderfully well. If you ask them to do the daily chores, they're all a mess. <laughs> you put them… <laughs> you put them into a difficult, unpredictable situations, they're doing great. So, uh, thirty-six days on the road, motorcycles, mm, all kinds of terrain, all kinds of situations, without a hitch, till we come here, nothing. I think now they will start some confusion <laughs> So, uh, it's, been a, it's been a great run. Well, first of all, our gratitude to all the Native American people who have cooperated and interacted with us, which is much of it is yet to come. And also, the builders of American infrastructure, thanks to them, they made the rides good. Here and there a bump, but very good, I would say. Thanks to the people who built these modern machines, which without a hitch, you could do hundred thousand miles without any problem, except tire changes, nothing, simply. <laughs> well, when I used to ride way back more than forty years ago, well, at least every thousand kilometers, not miles, kilometers, I had to dirty my hands, uh, 
look at the chain, look at this, look at that, readjust the cob, this one, that one, all kinds of things. Without messing your hands, you can't ride, that is part of motorcycling. But now the modern machines simply ride. Without a hitch, it's almost like solid state, <laughs> thanks to all of them. And uh, many, many other people on the way who we met, who enhanced the whole process. Many of them who came on with us in social media, many of them live. Without all of them, well, internationally it has created such a big buzz. Without all of them and our own teams constantly working both in India and here, uh, well, uh, It's been like always in the sense that is uh, nearly eighteen, twenty hours a day we are all working off-site, of course. But uh, as usual, everything non-stop seven days of the week, both for those of us who've been on the road and those who've been here, well, a different type of work but Um, I started using this word, work. I thought I would never use that four-letter word in my life because I never work. But uh, people, I started seeing comments coming up, saying, oh, Sadhguru is always having fun <laughs> So then I started using the word work. Otherwise, for many, many years consciously, I never used the word work because I never thought this is work. Because work is for people who want to make a living. Making a living has never been on my mind, right from very early age. When I decided not to qualify myself for anything particular, My father, who was academically a very studious and, you know, always in the top three kind of academic person, and uh, he couldn't imagine how somebody will survive without a qualification. So he was uh, fearful of my future always. What will happen to this boy? First thing, he has no fear in his heart. And next thing, he's not qualified for anything, where will he go, what will he do? I said, you don't worry about my survival. I don't know what I'll do, but if nothing works, I'll go into the forest and live. Because I knew I could survive in the jungle effortlessly, because I had done that before. I said, you don't worry about me. I will not come begging on the street, nor will I come back to you asking for something. Because from the age of eight, I did not take a single rupee of pocket money. I earned my own pocket money. So, when I was ten, twelve years of age, I have a few thousand rupees in my hands. I'm a rich guy, <laughs> very rich, <laughs> but I don't know where to keep it. So every thousand, thousand, I put it in a rubber band and hid it in my books all over inside because my books nev were never disturbed, you know <laughs> There's so much knowledge, I don't like to disturb them. So I hid my money tightly rolled up wads. So when I want to go on one of my expeditions, all I have to do is take one wad, put it in my pocket and go, it'll keep me going because I had many cycling, sponsored many cycling expeditions for all the other idiots who just when I want to win, somehow I get three, four of them and say, let's go th on this trip. Just when we're about to leave, they say, I don't have tires, so I cannot come. <laughs> so I put new tires on them and after the trip is over, I took it back.
So, uh, because survival has never been on my mind, I just can't believe why human beings should think about survival. And see, every other creature is able to survive. With a tiny little brain, they're able to survive. This big brain, survival, big issue. No, the problem is you want to survive like somebody else, that's the only problem. If you get rid of that one problem, survival is not an issue. You want to eat like them, you want to live in their kind of house, you want to dress like them, you want to do like them. I call this monkeying. Hello? Hello? You want to be like that one. This is monkeying, uh, this is evolutionary issue, you know, some things didn't happen. <laughs> Sadhguru, as soon as you come back, you're getting mean once again. No. <laughs> Even on the trip, I've been mean. <laughs> because <laughs> because uh, this… Well, certain people are going to other extremes, but this sense of structure in human mind has destroyed humanity. For everything there is a structure, for everything there is a structure. It's very important, you undo this structure, otherwise you will never know life. It's all set. It's all set. That's it, you know, uh, we have to go to school at a certain time, school is over, then we have to go to the university, maybe you didn't go there but you had to at least leave the house. But mm, once you get a job, every day you have to go there at that time, Slowly you build structures and structures and structures. In these structures there is no life, there is only psychiatry. <laughs> yes, there is no life. So once in a way, once a year you take a ten day vacation and then you enjoy. No, no, first two days only, after that you know what happens. So, I decided my entire life will be a vacation, but making the vacation useful. I'm not saying… I'm not talking only of this thirty-six days. I've been on a vacation always. Nobody has seen me ever in a working mode. <laughs> See, this is serious business, spirituality. <laughs> hey, click me, huh? This is serious business. This is not even like going to the office. Spirituality, you know, <laughs> serious business. Probably never before it's been conducted with such casualness and ease. Uh, I'm not trying to brag about myself, but unfortunately I've looked and it's been too bloody serious, I wouldn't want to be there. Uh, being intense, being profound, being focused on something is a different matter. Becoming serious and becoming a workman is a different matter. Oh, all this is easy for you sitting and talking here, people are commenting. What about that man who has to stand in the gro grocery store queue? <laughs> he can stand joyfully, who's stopping him? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> The man who's standing in the queue and the man or woman who's standing behind the counter, all of them can stand joyfully. Is anybody stopping them? There are so many people who do simple jobs with great joy, so many. I think generally this is more… at least it used to be more true with women because they largely worked from home, you know, like now all the men are also doing thanks to the virus <laughs> So, uh, they… Uh, at least I've seen my mother, my aunts and others, they… it's such a joy for them to cook, take care of the house, they will be singing and this and very happy that somebody eats well and da-da-da, you know. Once in a way they get into a mess but generally 
they did… I always noticed women were doing their work far more joyfully than men most of the time. Things have changed now. <laughs> now ladies are clapping their hands. <laughs> It is not about the nature of what we're doing, it is the way we are. Everybody has to do something, somebody has to spiritual knowledge, you know, very serious business. Because the moment you become spiritual, you must become long-faced, otherwise how are you spiritual? Now the problem with you is, now we don't even know how miserable you are, now you're all masked. We can't even find out and that too Isha mask style right till here <laughs> All those unsmiling faces are saved. The world is saved. They can wear a smiley on their mask. Done? Because uh, what is there, Sadhguru, yesterday also I smiled, I said ditto <laughs> Yesterday also I was smiling, so why should I smile today? It's not that you should smile, smile is a disease, you must smile is a kind of a disease. It is not that you must smile. Nobody told the plant that flowers should blossom, if it's well nourished it blossoms, that's it. It doesn't need a teaching. Hello? It doesn't need a teaching that these flowers should blossom and fragrance should spread. If it's well nourished, it'll blossom and it'll spread. But human beings, because they have a certain amount of brain that they have not learned how to use, they become like this. But this mask is such a savior, really. At least now, you can practice behind a mask how to be joyful, you know? <laughs> When you're unmasked after some time, hopefully <laughs> Because everybody is now creating all kinds of gold-braided masks, designer masks, all things, it looks like they're going to stay in that forever <laughs> Because it's… Uh, you know, it must be saving a a whole lot of uh, makeup equipment. <laughs> huh? See, now just imagine, even in the movies, suppose they make a new movie, everybody is masked. <laughs> so there's a certain kind of equality because there are no beautiful people, no ugly people, no good-looking people, not good-looking people, everybody same, you can wear a designer mask. So. Why am I doing this to you today? Because you were expecting me to share some adventure and stuff. Because the greatest adventure in life is not about climbing a mountain, riding a motorcycle, jumping off a mountain, no. The greatest adventure in life is every day, at least you're breaking one box in your head. You crossed a limitation. This is the greatest adventure. Even if you're riding, even if you're flying, even if you're doing something else, even there, the adventure is only in stretching beyond your limitations, isn't it? Hmm? The adventure is not in the mountain rock, the adventure is not on the motorcycle, the adventure is not on the airplane, the adventure is you broke a limitation, that's adventure. And nobody can deny you this, whether you're going to a nine-to-five work, in an office or doing something else, nobody can deny you this. You can every day break something. If you every day break one bondage, if every day you break one limitation, depending upon how many heaps of limitations you have, someday you must get liberated, hello? Bound to happen, huh? Liberation, see people are always thinking freedom means, oh, bird in the sky. No, no. You know, I was so fascinated with the birds, particularly hawks and eagles, I sat outside 
when I was living on the farm, I watched and watched and watched because I tried to fly when I was seventeen and it ended up with both my ankles cracked. So I always looked at these birds, how are they doing it, what, what should I do for this? Endlessly I watched them. Then I noticed, they're all up there, constantly looking down <laughs> for a mouse, for a squirrel, for a something else that moves on the ground. They're in… they've just gone to office. <laughs> Hello? It's just their office is up there. <laughs> They're looking there and like this. I rarely found, you know, only these tiny little birds, these sparrows and hummingbirds, these kind of things fly around joyfully like this for some time when they're well eaten. But all the big birds, <laughs> constantly looking down, rarely really enjoying their flight. This is true even with the pilots also. I'm saying those without wings who fly, you know, Richard Bach, I have highest regard for him. Well, you heard of Richard Bach? Yes. Oh, many of you know, you're all born after everything interesting is over in this world. Young people, I'm saying <laughs> Well, Richard Bach uh, was a legend in America, flying legend. He wrote books, some of his books became worldwide uh, cult classics, uh, Jonathan Livingstone Seagull. So, uh, he was so excited me, I was fourteen, fifteen when I started reading this uh, Richard Box books and… Uh, and in one of the books he says, he… all his life he spent time flying, flying. Then he says, the greatest joy in flying is when you see another pilot and he rolls his wing for you and you roll your wing for him. <laughs> Are communicating with people is such a joy, you could have been here, all the people are here, nobody's up there <laughs> Just… it's a smiley, you know, a flyer smiley. That is the greatest joy, I believe. That was the fifth book I was reading. After that, I never read anything <laughs> because you just enjoy. I know, Jyoti, your mask. I can't see. If, no, no, it's showing in your eyes. It's okay. <laughs> just this. That's the greatest joy of flying. You could do it here. Hello. <laughs> So, adventure is not in a particular activity, it's the way we approach life. Every step can be an adventure. In every step, you can walk a little better, do you know this? Hello? Have you tried? Just the step that you take, because it's not a simple act. Walking on a round planet, the goddamn thing is spinning, you think it's a small thing? Ask the boys who get drunk <laughs> or older people who have vertigo. It's not easy to walk on a round planet when it's spinning. There is a tremendous mechanism here. In exploring this itself is a great adventure, it's an endless adventure because if you spend hundred lifetimes, you will still not know the intricacy of how this is done because this was done over millions of years. Hello? Hello? This was done over millions of years. In one lifetime, nobody can know the intricacy of this one. You can just endlessly explore, but still there will be adventure left for you. Exploration will be still left, still uncharted terrains are still there within you. So, I think uh, it's, it'll be good because I have not said anything interesting about the trip. I think it'll be good if somebody who's traveled with me, uh, one of them speaks. Can somebody come up and speak? Microphone, please.
Namaskaram Sadhguru. Please, sir, if you can face him. Come here. Namaskaram Sadhguru. Uh, thank you for the uh, opportunity to ride with you, Sadhguru. Um, we rode almost 10,000 miles, and uh, not even one time we felt tired. With His grace, everything goes very smooth, and it's a wonderful journey. Um, uh, it happened once, my fellow rider doesn't able to start his motorcycle in a gas station, and when uh, Sadhguru come and looked at it, uh, just in a few seconds, he said, now start, and then the motorcycle started. Right? <laughs> We've been struggling for uh, 10 minutes almost, but uh, with His grace, you know, it's just a miracle. I didn't understand at that point, and then I was asking my fellow writer at the end of the day, what happened, how it start. Then he explained me, then only I came to know that, you know, with His grace, we able to start the motorcycle. <laughs> See, what kind of riders I've been riding with, huh? <laughs> Uh, he's like a mother, always you know, look after us, and uh, he he always asks us whether you guys had food. <laughs> and also, he gives a lot of tips for me how to ride like a dad. <laughs> Please don't do that. Please do like this. You know, it's always check on our motorcycle also. Uh, does it need oil change or the tire needs to be replaced? So every little thing, he concerned about it, and he always take care of us. Um, and wherever we go in the campsite, uh, people throw all the stuff, uh, and he always mention us that take few minutes and make sure it should be cleaner than we came here. So we take a little extra time to do that. Uh, and I like to say it because he's more environment concerned, and uh, he also tell us uh, to be more hygiene, wear the mask and uh, and sanitize. Uh, and also, I want to thank all the volunteers wherever we go. Uh, uh, they always give us good food. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I'd like to thank all the volunteers who are with us, uh, all the 17 people. Uh, they are, we are like a one f big family. I never felt... Uh, as a one family, um, they always take care of each other. If somebody doesn't have food to eat, then they quickly make little more extra, and then uh, they feed us. And the Sadhguru is always uh, uh, take care of us every little thing, and he always check us uh, how things going on. Um, I ride a motorcycle which is like a 600 pounds, and the one he rides is 900 pounds. I don't know whether he, in his age, when I come to his age, I'm able to ride that kind of bike. <laughs> uh, it's really amazing. It takes an uh, average four to five meetings and riding with us. And also, he do a lot of work, other activities going around the places, and uh, also answer all the social media questions. Uh, really amazed uh, to see that. And I thank all the people. We are like an army. Wherever we go, uh, we have a people here in the ashram in Tripoli in India. They always give us all the information, where to go, where to stay, and take care of our food. And thank you very much for this opportunity, Sadhguru. And thank you very much for all the volunteers. Namaskar. Namaskaram, everyone. Um, this trip has uh, meant everything to me. Um, when uh, I found out I was going the day before we left, um, <laughs> I was like, I just couldn't believe um, how lucky um, uh, you know I am to be a part of this. Uh, riding with Sadhguru is <laughs> it's an absolute dream, and um, 
with our team, we uh, got to share that with every one of you. And um, me seeing all these videos and all these sharings, like, you know, I'm just in the back. <laughs> so uh, you guys had, had just as much experience uh, of the trip as, as I have, if not more. And, um, you know, me growing up in America, you know, I've had this limited uh, experience of the, of the nation and its native people. So really uh, being exposed to this has, has been a dream that I didn't, that I didn't even know that I had. Um, knowing what uh, has happened to these people um, to create the life that, that I have, um, it's, uh, it's heartbreaking and to see the state that they're in. So um, I think every one of us should take time to um, see these people, experience them, um, and see how they have impacted our lives. Because now going through all this, I'm seeing how much uh, these Native people have impacted us, not even here, but their um, kind of impact has been all over the world. And, um, you know, I haven't seen even the West Coast and so just being able to go on this trip and uh, see the whole country, and um, I, I couldn't even say anything more about it. It's just, been, it's just been truly amazing, and I just wanted to thank everyone that was part of it. Thank you so much. Namaskaram. I am going to be emotional. It was an amazing adventure. Sudgar took such wonderful care of us. It was great to see him in so many different ways. He's spoken many stories about being a little boy, but we got to see the little boy. <laughs> we got to see the man. We got to see a mother and a father. We got to see a mystic. The way he approached each place that we went to, the way he approached each person that he ran into, it was so beautiful to experience. There were some places he went to and he would just walk in and look around and walk away. And then there were other places like the Grand Canyon that just seemed to captivate him. And uh, he did some processes there, and he spoke about how the Grand Canyon was actually welcoming the people, and the canyon itself was aware of all the visitors that were there. It was just amazing to experience that with him, and to see that he sees the world in such a different way. It was such an inspiration to all of us. I'm glad we were able to share what little video you've been able to see. I'm just so grateful for the experience. It's hard to put it into words. Thank you, Sadhguru, for taking such good care of us. Namaskaram. It's uh, been an immense privilege to be part of the team um, and to see America from the eyes and perspective of Sadhguru. Um, this would have definitely not been possible to me in that way. Um, these uh, we planned for two and a half weeks, and it was 36 days. <laughs> um, but it felt like it was just one day. It felt like yesterday we left the ashram, the triple I, and we're back today. It's been so rich and so intense. We've been up on our toes every moment. <laughs> The trip was completely uncharted and unplanned. Every day, um, 
deciding where we're going to be next day. Many times it's just like in the morning or late in the evening that we would get to know what we are going to do next and uh, where we're going to go. Um, generally, it takes months, if not at least a year of preparation for something which is so big and so huge, I would say, in terms of what has happened in these months and few days. But all this happened in less than a month of uh, you know, preparation. The most important thing is all of us went, all of us came back. There have been not one single accident, not one single injury, not one single one of us sick. All the time feeling literally carried by Sadhguru, literally in, a, in his protective net. Whatever, how he does these things, I don't know. So many days driving for six, eight hours, sometimes ten hours. And, you know, still activity need, is there, having to take care of things to ensure that, you know, the best can happen, the things that none of us can do, he can do. Yes, stretched physically, you know, mentally, in every possible way, but at the same time, every time feeling that the necessary energy, the necessary support is there for whatever needs to happen. This trip has definitely broke a lot of my limitations, have definitely been you know, instrumental in making see many things about myself, and I'm so immensely grateful to Sadhguru and everyone who was there as part of this trip. And in the background, also not just, you know, those who traveled, um, handling many things at the same time. Each one of us had to be involved in different activities, not just one single activity. Um, but it's been... It's a darshan, it's not a program. <laughs> it's been most humbling. And... <laughs> I'm grateful. You should not overhear instructions like that. <laughs> well, mm. oh. cameras were on literally eighteen, twenty hours a day. I hope we've captured enough, but what we have seen and experienced, very difficult to articulate and put it in picture. I hope, uh, I'm sure all the teams both here and India will do their best to put it out in the best possible way because uh, so much has been captured, it will take uh, probably a month or two or even more to slowly bring this out step by step because last thirty-six days uh, literally on an average, sixteen to eighteen hours, cameras have been on. So, uh, please await the process of unfolding. Let's see how efficiently we can do it. It may take time to do this. Why a trip like this is… Uh, I think all of you by now, you know that almost eighteen years ago near Cookville, something very profoundly touched me about what happened in this area. So uh, that's one reason when people came with various recommendations for land for the center, I said, we'll go here. Well, it's beautiful, 
but uh, it's a pain in the land which you kind know, of brought me here. People who are here during the Mahima consecration have seen certain things uh, which kind of represented that. Well, now exploring the Native American culture, not that anybody can do it in thirty-six days, because at one time there were over five hundred nations. They're all being labeled as just one people now, as one identity. But there were five hundred individual nations with their own languages, their own culture, their own spiritual process. It will no need a lot more time. <laughs> There's really a lifetime to do justice to all of them. But uh, I don't believe we can do justice to them for what they have been through, who they are, how long they've been here, nearly forty thousand years they've been here. We cannot do justice to that, but I thought at least uh, we must make them visible in the world because right now they are quite invisible. Because in the rest of the world, maybe in America there is some knowledge about it, but in the rest of the world, Native American people means a bunch of young men who ride saddle-less, you know, bareback horses, scream all the time and shoot at anybody who comes their way and do terrible things. And of course, if you have some air hair, they'll take your scalp. Mukesh, you're safe. <laughs> so, uh, this is not what they are and they had well-established settlements, place like Kahokia over a thousand years ago, forty thousand people in one city. Just to give you a perspective, in the same period, in London there were only fifteen thousand people population. Here, a Native American village had forty thousand people. Forty thousand people cannot stay in one place without proper administration, without management, without a whole system of civilization. You cannot live together, forty thousand people. So, there are… there are many, many aspects I… I don't think we can ever bring forth all of them in a just manner to them. I'm sure many of them will feel we have not done justice to them. I don't think I can do justice to them. Only thing is I want to make them visible. People should at least recognize there are people like this. There are people like this in the world who have lived on this land for a very, very long time, but today they're invisible. We want to make them visible. Well, you can't fix the past, but you can carve out a way for the future. That's all we can do. Nobody can fix the past. What happened yesterday cannot be altered today, but what we do tomorrow, some possibilities could be created. Hope we'll be successful in that in some way. And already there is visibility across the world. There is a lot of buzz in India, there's a lot of buzz media, mainstream media reporting big time about this. So, which is good for them that they're becoming visible. And we will make sure, considering that today's the world is run on internet in many ways, we will make sure they're visible in the next couple of years, we will make sure a lot of visibility comes, all of you strive to do whatever we can. See, we cannot there is no point going into regret, going into guilt, going into something else. The only way to fix something is to compensate in some way with our lives. So, uh, I would say whatever time that you spend on your social media, I don't know how many hours you are… Huh? Okay. You six hours a day? Whatever is your time, please tend, please spend five percent of your social media time to say something about these people. There's enough information, not just from us, there is enough information. Say something about them, to your friend, to your family, to somebody, that there are people like this. Not going on picking up the horrible things that happened, 
that something that is positive, something that is wonderful about them, the profoundness of who they are. And above all, they are very, very relevant today because they lived as land. They did not live upon the land, they lived as land. As the tree stands, they lived like that, just being a part of it. I think uh, this is very, very relevant for this generation and the next. Environment is still… environmental concerns are still in the textbooks, in the PhD theses, somewhere in United Nations or somewhere, somewhere like that. No, it has to come into people's hearts. For that there is no better information, there is no better inspiration than the Native American people. Environment was in their heart. It occupied the whole of it. I think this needs to happen to this generation, if at all, if something significant needs to happen for our own well-being and our children's well-being tomorrow. This is very important. So, uh, it's been a fantastic run this thirty-six days. But uh, I saw last two, three days, uh, our teams have been carrying little long face because they think it's too brief. <laughs> it got over too soon <laughs> Well, uh, you shouldn't stretch a good thing too much, you know? It's… when it's still good <laughs> uh, The best thing is, without a single hitch, as all of them mentioned, we went through some heavily, uh, you know, the pandemic being in full force in some of the states where we went, where maximum number of infections and casualties are happening, we went through those states. But uh, all of us, not one of us caught the infection or became sick in any other way. So, uh, there is a way, is okay, time wise, I'll be okay. Hmm? You are okay, you have nothing to do <laughs> huh? No, no, it's a, I'm saying it in a good way <laughs> I'm saying uh, the online thing is okay. Hello, who is in charge of this? Namaskaram, all of you, wherever you are, you're watching, we'll just take a few minutes. I was talking to a senior doctor who is a researcher of this things, who is uh, kind of one of the foremost experts on Ayurveda and alternative medicine systems. So when I was talking to him, uh, uh, I was… because, you know, I am not a scholar of any kind in Ayurveda or anything. I just know what happens in my body, that's it. This is the only Veda I read. So I, he was talking about prana and other things, then I said, what about ojas? For me, all I know is whatever, anything that doesn't function, if I wrap myself in ojas, it fixes itself, it doesn't matter what somebody says, how I'm doing, I'm doing well. Because it's not just a cocoon that you create around yourself, it's a cocoon that you could create around a million people if you want. And it's also a cocoon that you can create around each cell of yours. Every cell in the body can have a… a, a layer of ojas around it. This is a non-physical dimension of energy, which is what you're trying to develop. <coughs> is the rabbit coming out? <laughs> You… you're trying. Maybe once a week, huh? <laughs> Hello? Once a week, is it? Huh? So some of you are tra trying daily, some of you are whatever. Well, this is a simple method. There are other ways to simply imbibe because it's there. Uh, See, you're on debit card. Then, let's say if you have thousand dollars, you can only withdraw thousand dollars. 
your own credit card. <laughs> you can go on drawing, okay, it's bank's money. Well, you have done too much of that, I am not talking about money drawing. There is a boundless amount of energy in the existence. For one who is willing to open his or her doors, for those who don't open the doors, they have to generate from within, a lot of work. Oh, I'm open Sadhguru, so I don't have to do my practices tomorrow morning. <laughs> no, no, the practice will open the door, otherwise it will close. <laughs> yes, very easily it'll close. If you're walking on the street and somebody calls you an idiot, it'll close. <laughs> yes or no? One little thing, you're going and you tripped and little blood came in your toe, only your toe. But doors will close. Somebody pointed a toy gun at you, doors will close. Hello? So like this, there are people in your family and uh, in the office and on the street, uh, they'll do something to close your door, not by intent because they're just, by nature, they're door closers. And all you need is that kind of excuse, somebody said something, somebody did something, this happened, that happened, close the door. Wonderful. Close the door, close the window also, close the ventilator also, at least that way you will end. Sadhguru, we came here for your blessings, you're saying about ending. No, no, I'm just saying, if you close off everything, you will end. If you open everything, you will become alive in a way that you cannot imagine. That your aliveness is not just about yourself, it can light up everything around you. Otherwise, you just keep the vent open, you will breathe. You will stay alive, it's like the ICU. Most homes are like ICU, you know. Not that I see you, I mean to say <laughs> intensive care unit. There are support systems, physical, psychological, emotional tubes all attached. Every day in the morning, I love you, you love me, okay? Confirmation. Why, if you look at their bloody face, you must know whether they love you or not. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> I'm asking you, if you look at their face, they mu you must know whether they love you or not, isn't it? No, this is ICU, intensive care unit. If you pull out one tube, things will fall apart. So these intensive care units, you must transform them into… Uh, into… into a cocoon of ojas. Then, even if you live in a cubicle, you will still live in like a cosmic life. Most yogis lived in a small little cave, but their experience is cosmic because they loaded their place with energies which will allow you to break the limitations of physicality. Well, aspirations are there in everybody, but not enough commitment to make that happen. It's my wish and my blessing. Every one of you, you're here or wherever else you are, oh, something important call is coming. <laughs> Sorry. They're asking you, why is Sadhguru still speaking, calling from home <laughs> He's supposed to shut up at 8.30, <laughs> why is he still talking? I see you care, <laughs> like that, <laughs> very efficient <laughs> So it's my wish and my blessings that you create this for yourself in this life. Yeah. If you don't do this, when I'm here, believe me, 
it'll be an uphill task for you later on. Namaskar. Yoga, 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 Swaraya. Bhuta, 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 Swaraya. Kale, 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 Swaraya. Shiva, Shiva, Sarveshwaraya Shambho, Shambho, Mahadevaya Gurjeev he was a wacky, wacky master. Ospensky, who was a great mathematician, became his disciple. During the war time, it was so risky for anybody to travel into Soviet Union and that part of the world. Gurdjieff sent a telegram to Ospensky, who was in London, come immediately. He thought enlightenment will be handed over or something. So Aspensky came, Gurdjieff was sitting, he said, I've come. Gurdjieff looked at him and said, oh, you come, you may leave. And Aspensky left and left for good. Gurdjieff wept, Gurdjieff actually wept. <laughs> 